is A to Z with Mark Zinno, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, and it starts now. Good afternoon. Welcome to A to Z here on Locked On Sports Atlanta, where today I tell you it's a chess matchup. Welcome in. We are live here on this Thursday as we get you ready for inching closer to a huge sports weekend here in Atlanta. Give us a follow on Twitter at Locked On ATL. Of course, I'm at Mark Zinno, M A R K Z I N N O. Uh, we'll get into the Braves. Obviously, we got some Falcons no news and tidbits to get to as they prepare for the Cleveland Browns. Some major baseball events last night we'll get to. Plus, UGA getting set to take on Missouri this weekend on the road. So I will do all that and more. First, obviously, you know, the uh, the genuine uh, thoughts with all the people of Florida right now. You've, I've seen pictures uh, of the devastation of Hurricane Ian and where they are. And I hope everybody is safe. I, I hope as many people are okay. And uh, it's been bad. It's been ugly. So, uh, you know, the, the, as much as we make fun of thoughts and prayers and things of that nature, but, you know, sending positive vibes to all the people in Florida, and all the people affected by Hurricane Ian. So I hope everybody is doing okay uh, just down south of us. All right. Um, before we get to the Falcons, obviously last night, Braves uh, miss an opportunity. They lose a game in extra innings to the Washington Nationals. The Mets win their game in extra innings to uh, against the Miami Marlins. And, and people seem to have some sort of angst about the Braves losing a game last night. Um, and, and I'm not really sure – why? I mean, is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. Should you have lost to an inferior team? Probably not. But let's go back to the age-old premise about Major League Baseball that every single team is going to win 60 games and lose 60 games. In the mix of that 60 games, you're going to be losing to teams that you shouldn't. You're going to be losing games that you shouldn't in ways that you probably shouldn't. That's what happens when you do something 162 times during a season. You kind of just have to live with it. If you get upset about all those losses, eh. I mean, sure, you could point to last night, but you could point to three losses back in April that they shouldn't have had. You could point to four losses at sometime between May and June that they shouldn't have had. Or at least in May, June, they played really, really well. But you get the point. I mean, you know, there's so many opportunities over the course of a 162-game season. Don't get wrapped up in this. Again, if I hit the rewind button and put you on May 31st, when there was a 10 and a half game deficit and said, guess what? Heading into that final series of the year, you're going to be trailing the Mets by a game with a chance to go win the division. You would have said, I'll take it right now. Without hesitation, without question. So don't get wrapped up in last night about losing a game to a team that you shouldn't have lost to. The night before the Mets lost to a team they shouldn't have lost to. And that's how you tied them. I mean, guys. You know, it's baseball. There's, there's nothing really, you know, pretty or, or fancy you could say about it, or there's no other way to sugarcoat it. It just happens. That's part of the game. So you're in position exactly where you need to be. You got three games going up against the Mets. Uh, the starters for this series are Max Free, Jacob Brom, Jacob DeGrom on Friday, Kyle Wright, and Max Scherzer on Saturday, Chris Bassett, Charlie Morton on Sunday. You got to hope to take two out of three to tie him and then hope somebody trips up in the final three. You sweep them, not only do you get the single season tie break, but you take a two-game lead with three to go. And all you got to do is win one more game uh, against the Marlins, and you lock up the division. I don't think either team is sweeping. It's just not likely. But we'll see. Um, you got to get the first one. If you lose the first one, you know, you're in danger of, of uh, you know, facing elimination in game two. That's just what it boils down to. So if you get the best version of Jacob deGrom, you better get the best version of Max Freed, and you better get the very best version of Kyle Wright. Max sure is going to tell you what, I don't like the matchup on Sunday. Edge Mets. That's just, you know, objectively where it is right now. All right, so uh, obviously we'll keep the Mets, uh, I mean the Mets rather, the Braves in our, <laughs> in, in, right, right in our, our view ahead as we head towards the weekend and tomorrow night. Now, I am excited about Sunday's matchup between the Atlanta Falcons and the Cleveland Browns because of the head coaches. Kevin Stefanski is somebody that I've applauded for quite some time. 
you know, finally the Cleveland Browns got a head coach. Finally, they got a coach that wasn't going to screw this up. Finally, they got, you know, instead of getting all the, the, the coaches wrong over the years between, you know, the Pat Shermers and the, who else did they get? They, they just, you know, they were, were awful. Um, and I'm looking them up real quick. But, you know, they finally got a coach that knows what the hell he's doing. And, you know, in that, they have gotten some stability that they never had before, right? They, they, they found a head coach who's well-prepared. They found a head coach who, who clearly understands, you know, the assignment each week. And let me go back to some of these coaches since uh, Bill Belichick, Chris Palmer, Butch Davis, Terry, Terry Bisky was interim, but Romeo Cornell, Pat Shermer, Rod Chizinski, Mike Pettin, Hugh Jackson, Freddie Kitchens for crying out loud. Dear Lord. You finally got a coach who knows what the hell he's doing. That's really what it boils down to. And the Falcons have a coach who knows what he's doing. And that, to me, is also really important. And these two coaches prepare well, and they they scheme well, uh, and they, they, they take care of the little details that are important. And that's going to manifest itself on Sunday. I am so curious to see – how both of these teams execute their run game. Because to this point in the season, through three games, that's been their bread and butter. Now, in fairness to the Browns, the run game's been their bread and butter for the better part of three seasons now since that Nick Chubb guy showed up. And it's worked out really well for him. Okay, good. How do the Falcons stop it? What do they do? And, and how much of the passing game do they focus on early on in the game? Is there a sense to try and let the pass set up the run, you know, who knows? Or do you just come out and try to knock them in the mouth? You know, when you look at the rushing defenses, Cleveland Browns have one of the better ones in the league so far statistically, allowing only 83 yards per game. Falcons average 109. Sure, edge Cleveland statistically, but Cleveland may also be without Miles Garrett. That's a big loss. We'll know more about that as the rest of this week goes on and we head into Sunday. And how much does home field advantage play a factor for the Falcons? All these things go into it. But this is one of those games where if you are going to put people on notice that you're really a team that can win, this is one that you have to win. Why? Because 2 through 53, the Cleveland Browns are wildly more talented than the Atlanta Falcons. That's just is what it is. Um, you know, if you'd like to go down position by position, sure. Do the Falcons have the better tight end? Yes. But do the Falcons have a better cornerback one? Yes. But other than that, even Grady Jarrett, you know, that, that Cleveland D line is pretty stacked, uh, especially with Miles Garrett if he's in the fold. So you get the point. Um, and if you're going to win a game like this, you're going to need to play your very best football, mistake-free football, and be able to take advantage of every mistake that the other team makes. But if you'd just like to be a team that's not a good cover team, like the Falcons are as far as being 3-0 and against the spread, uh, and you'd like to be a team that you know can, can start winning more games than you are just keeping it close, these are the kind of games that ultimately will dictate the perception of who you are. Very short number. I think it was... The, the spread was two points last time I checked. It might even be down to one and a half uh, in certain places. But this is where you make your hay as a head coach and you really start to put people on notice. If you're here in Atlanta, you know how good Arthur Smith is. I've told you how good he is on a, re on a routine basis. I've let you know that uh, this is a guy that prepares as good as any other coach in the league. And that manifests itself on Sunday. It'll show up again today. You're just playing a very talented roster. Uh, with a coach who's equally as detail-oriented and plans just as well as you do. And that's where the chess match is. Now, there may be some some plays that manifest itself in the course of the game on Sunday that, um, you know, show you uh, that they have a more talented roster and they execute better. Doesn't mean you're not prepared. Doesn't mean that you you didn't do your homework. Just means you get beat. And that's sometimes that's part of football. And I'll actually be at the game on Sunday. So uh, I will be high upon my perch watching it. I'll put some photos out on Instagram for you guys, at Mark Zeno as well. All right, coming up next, um, it was a historic night in Major League Baseball. 
And I need people to understand and respect what we just saw. That's coming up. But first, a word from our friends at betonline.net, the fastest, easiest way to check in on all of your sports betting needs. Find your favorite sports and events at the number one online source for odds, lines, and games. Just told you about uh, the Falcons line. You can go check Bet Online for that information as well. You find news and reviews of every league. Obviously, the NFL, college football having a big weekend, big SEC weekend in college, guys. You got to check out all the great information on Bet Online. Of course, you got NBA, NHL, Major League Baseball as well, combat sports, esports, even golf. It's all right there on Bet Online as they are the top online resource for all your sports wagering information, live in game betting, sports podcasts, scores. I mean, it's all right there. They've got you covered. Head to Bet Online today. Use your mobile device to learn more about the action happening today. Bet Online, where the game starts. So last night, Aaron Judge hit his 61st home run of the season in game 155 and tied the American League mark for most home runs in a single season. For the record, it took uh, Roger Maris game 163. It's actually a tiebreaker game, which still counts as a regular season game when they had them um, to break Babe Ruth's record. Now, I've said this on Twitter. I've said it on multiple shows and networks that I've been on over the course of um, – the past week, and I'll say it again here for my audience. This is simply the greatest non-steroid season that we are seeing in 60 years. That's just simply what it is, folks. It is simply what it is. You don't have to try to sugarcoat it. You don't have to shoot holes in the argument. You don't have to look for some statistical analysis of war and exit velocity and EPA this or whatever and pick whatever nerd stat you want. Just sit back and watch what is unfolded this year and recognize that this is simply the greatest non-steroid aided season of our lifetime. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys, I'm not going to do this thing where it's like, oh, Barry Bonds isn't the home, the single season home run king or all-time home run king. I'm not going to say that Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire didn't count. I'm not going to say any of those things because I, I, I can't say with any certainty that those things wouldn't have happened. We do know that they broke the rules that weren't really rules but that we all assumed were rules because we wanted everybody to do things on the up and up. That didn't happen. So I can leave those where they are. But in the same respect, I can acknowledge that what we've all watched and what I've watched this year is the greatest single season I've ever seen in my adult life of a, of a non-steroid-aided nature. That's it. And for the people who are doubting this whole thing, I mean, like I genuinely hope just for you know the, the punctuation of the whole thing, that Aaron Judge wins the Triple Crown. Right now, he is tied with Luis Arez uh, of Minnesota at 313, and I'm sure there's percentage points above that they have him listed above uh, Arez, but, you know, or uh, Arez, Ar Arez, I forget how you say his name. Anyway, regardless. But clearly, he's going to win the AL home run uh, title, obviously. He's going to win the RBI title. He's got 11 RBIs on Jose Ramirez of Cleveland. He does not have the most RBIs in all of Major League Baseball. Pete Alonso has him. He's only one behind. But, and again, he's he's not going to catch Freddie Freeman or Jeff McNeil, um, who are 7 to 14 points ahead of him in the final week of the season. So that's not going to happen. But as far as the American League is, he, he can win the Triple Crown. And I'd like that punctuation on top of it. So when you add a Triple Crown, which automatically makes you the MVP 99 times out of 100, and then you add 61 or 62 on top of it. Now, he'll probably finish with 64, is my guess. Uh, once you get the – got the monkey off his back, right, at this point in time. Um, it's it's sort of that same ideology of winning the NFC or AFC championship game is sometimes harder than winning the Super Bowl. Players will tell you that. Getting over that hump of just getting to the Super Bowl is so much more difficult than actually winning the Super Bowl. Uh, and so now that he got to 61 after a six-game absence uh, or a six-game, you know, streak of not getting a home run yeah he'll, head, he'll get back home be super relaxed and in the home run hitter friendly ballpark he's destroyed Oriole pitching this year so you know don't even it's that simple so again the single greatest season that we've seen it's going to end in the mvp 
Uh, and it should be fairly unanimous. I, I don't care what you stat nerds say about Shohei Otani. Bite me. I mean, that's that's the best. That's the nicest I can be about it. Th there's literally not a reason that Shohei Otani should be voted for MVP over Aaron Judge, given the year that he has. And a lot of you sit there maybe saying, no, oh, you're a Yankee fan, that's your bias. It, whatever. I mean, objectively, I said the same thing in the NFL a couple of years ago. When a running back rushes for 2,000 yards, I don't care what a quarterback does. There's no reason that the running back isn't the MVP. Derrick Henry didn't get it, and Aaron Rodgers did. Miscalculation by voters. You guys are wrong. So all this in a bottle, I, I bring all this back to say, I hope everybody appreciates this. I genuinely do because I, I think that it is noteworthy uh, to be able to have recognized this. And I've had this argument again that uh, the home run record, the single season home run record is simply the most prized record in all of sports. It just is. I don't know why. I don't know why we chose it, but it's something that stood for, you know, 40 years. Uh, from when Babe Ruth did it to when Roger Maris did it, it stood another 61 years, at least the American League version of it, for when it was at least tied again. So, I mean, honestly, it, this is just the most prized record in all of sports. It's why it was so important when Hank, record, Hank Aaron broke Babe Ruth's record. Because the home run record, single season, and career is simply the most important record in all of sports. And while uh, we, we, you could be happy that nobody has to break into uh, college football games anymore to put 61 up on the screen, because guess what, guys? Uh, you could write this down now, and I'll say I told you so on Monday, but he's, he's hitting 62 on Friday night. It, it, it's happening. Just write it down. I'm telling you. I'm not wrong on this one. He absolutely is going to hit 62 at home on Friday night against Oriole pitching. There's that. But again. Single greatest non steroidated season of our lifetimes. That there's no other way to phrase it. You don't have to try to, to make it into something it's not. It just is. All right, coming up next, uh, UGA. You know, they, they didn't look so crisp last Saturday, and it's caused people to do something that is really, well, kind of silly at this point. But first, a word from our friends at Coffee AM. Best small batch coffee roaster in America, folks. And it's right here in Georgia. And the freshest coffee you'll ever get. Why? Because they roast and ship their coffees in the same day or close to it. That's how you know it's delicious. That's how you know it's fresh. And they have a flavor palette, if you will, a variety of flavors from across the globe. Tanzania, Sumatra, Kenya, Costa Rica, Colombia, wherever you think a coffee should be from, Coffee AM. That's where they get it from. And that's why it's so delicious. Every day I start mine with a K-cup, plop it right in the Keurig, get my coffee AM, and my day is off and running. You should do the same. How do you do it? Go to coffeeam.com backslash locked on. Check out the full list of coffees, teas, and gift sets available to you. Use the coupon code locked on. At checkout, you'll get 15% off your very first order of coffees, teas, and gift sets. Again, coffeeam.com backslash locked on is the way you get 15% off. Uh, before we get to UGA, let's hand out a shovel of wisdom. Brace yourselves, because it's time for the Shovel of Wisdom. Yeah, you know how we do it every day. We like to whack somebody right upside the head, set them straight for saying you're doing something stupid, and you can do so on my Twitter account, at Mark Zinno, M-A-R-K-Z-I-N-N-O. And today my shovel goes to... New England Patriots press corps. Uh, they did it again. They did it with Bill again. And Bill got him. Bill got him. Why? Bill Belichick's is the best. So, New England Patriots press corps was literally pressing Bill Belichick on the status of Mac Jones, quarterback for the Patriots, who has a, uh, a high ankle sprain, at least those were the reports. Uh, Belichick wanted to play coy. About the status of his young quarterback, as all coaches do when it comes to injuries. Well, and you'll just hear a very familiar phrase. I'm going to play the next 30 seconds for you of Bill Belichick's press conference. And you'll hear a very familiar phrase that apparently reporters weren't too keen on picking up on that he wasn't going to change his team. Hey, but they didn't go to Does he have a high ankle sprain? Hey, I. 
what do I look like? A doctor, an orthopedic surgeon? Like, I don't know. Talk to the medical experts. Who are the medical experts on staff? If I did. <laughs> Well, evaluate him, Dave. I mean, what difference does it make to me? What do you, like, do you think I'm going to read the MRI? That's not my job. So, it's there and they talk about Yeah, it's day by day. Six. <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. It genuinely does not get better than that for me. I mean, clearly, Belichick was not going to give in. He was going to say day by day repeatedly. And these morons were going to continue to ask questions and not realize that he said day by day. Only six times in the clip that I just played, but totally in the press conference. I'm apparently, according to the, the uh, ESPN.com columnist, Mike Reese, Mike Rice, uh, he said it 12 times. So, uh, you, guys, you guys should pick up on that day by day. day, by day. And then, of course, you got to get the Ben Stiller in. Day by day. Day by day. By day. All right. Um, before we get to uh, UGA, a reminder, guys, we are on Roku TV, on your Amazon Fire Stick. You can get Locked On Sports Atlanta a bunch of ways. Free on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts, or Locked On Sports Atlanta. We're also now on Roku TV, so check us out there as well. Don't forget to subscribe to that YouTube channel. Give a thumbs up and like to all the content there. Okay, let's get to uh, Georgia here. You know, there's this thing going on here um, with Georgia that tends to happen after you win the whole bleeping thing, right? We, we, we do this. And maybe it's done more um, in the town that you're in than it is nationally. Because I don't see a lot of national write-ups on the Georgia Bulldogs looking for holes in their game. Right? Like, that to me is what generally is I'm seeing. And, and you know, you, 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 this is in the AJC. Uh, it's on The Athletic by Seth Emerson, who does a fantastic job of covering uh, UGA, but you know, there's this general desire to try and find holes in the game of Georgia. It, it cracks within the veneer, you know, uh, and you can just look, you know, uh, um, at, at the headlines themselves, you know, you know, Georgia's offensive line looking to improve, you know, are the tailbacks a concern? You know, I mean, these these are headlines I've been seeing all week long after this game uh, against Kent State where they didn't play their best football, right? Or at least, you know, the score said they didn't play their best football. We do this thing now where we try to figure out ways that Georgia's actually going to lose instead of just sort of recognizing that once you win the thing and you're going for back to back, guess what? You don't have to score points or aesthetics. You don't, you don't have to make it pretty. You just got to go out there and win because they're going to get the benefit of the doubt. Guess what? Georgia goes undefeated. I don't care if they win every game by a field goal the rest of the way. They're in the college football playoff. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. They'll get the benefit of the doubt, as they should. Why shouldn't they get it? They're the defending national champion. They don't need style points. And there is this weird ideology, which I tend to agree with to a certain extent. Um, because of the whole knock the champ off thing. Uh, but, you know, when you're the number one team in the nation, uh, as long as you keep winning, generally, you're going to hold on to the top spot. Right? Now, as you know, Alabama was the top spot. They haven't lost the game, and they've been taken out. Yeah, that's true. But what happens is two things. One, Alabama played a really close game that they probably should have lost to Texas. Uh, and what did Georgia do in the first three weeks? Just destroy the hell out of everybody. And you sort of hung on to the Oregon victory in week one, the 49-3 deal. That sort of pitted everybody like, hey, you know, what Georgia did to Texas, Texas is nowhere near as good as Oregon. Transit property says Georgia should be better than Alabama. They put them over the top, yeah. So uh, Alabama would have to go out and destroy three or four opponents. We need to see Georgia struggle three or four opponents for them to flip, but generally everyone's going to give them the benefit of the doubt of being the number one team in the nation as long as they win every week. Survive in advance, man. That's good enough. Absolutely good enough. And there's no reason to believe that as long as Georgia does that, they won't stay ranked number one. And even if they lose in the SEC championship game to whomever, might be Alabama, might not. Watch out. Um, 
even if they lose in the SEC championship game, guess what? They're still going to the college football. So I don't know why we want to do this thing where we're going to uh, look at Georgia and try to find cracks in the veneer of a team that is generally better than everybody else and is well coached as any other team in the country. That's it. I don't. I don't try to overthink the easy things. You know, like that's really the only way I look at it. Georgia is the best team in the country. Don't overthink it. People, where it is, I don't have to do anything else. If you can do that, great. I, I think you're, you're going to enjoy Georgia football for the rest of the year. If you want to try to find reasons why they're going to lose a game, who possibly could beat them, where they're going to slip up, knock yourself out. I'm not wasting my energy on that. Do I think Kentucky will be a tough game? Sure. Do I think Tennessee will be, you know, a challenge? Absolutely. Do I think they're going to lose either one of those games? How about no? I don't. And you should be. Because they're not going. That's it. Team's better than everybody. And we all know it. Don't complicate it. All right, that'll do it for us here on this Thursday. Guys, huge, huge college stuff this weekend. I want to dive into tomorrow. A lot of games. We're going to be on TV, including Alabama, Arkansas. I'll have all my official picks out as well. We'll do that tomorrow on a football Friday. Get you ready for Falcons and Browns and a whole lot more. Appreciate you guys joining us again. Give me a follow on Twitter at Marcino at Locked on ATL. Don't forget to check us out on Roku TV, on your Amazon Fire Stick, free on YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. Search Locked on Sports and subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. Back tomorrow. Have a great Thursday. Don't forget to grab